Unlike Shazam, let's get right to it, and this movie is a damn good time at the theater. DC has hit their stride with Aquaman, James Gunn rebooting the Suicide Squad, the Batman casting news coming right around the corner, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie coming out in October, and DC and really comic book fans in general should be excited about the future of this franchise. This film proves that they have decided to hone in on the individual characters' stories. And this film, of course, references that they are in a world where Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman exist, and they really have fun with that. But this movie is really about Billy Batson, about Shazam, about Captain Sparkly Fingers. It's a story about a kid with no family, abandoned as a child, desperately holding on to a family that he has never had, never really appreciating the ones that he does have. It's also about a kid who had a family that never truly appreciated him, a kid who was told he wasn't good enough by many people, including his own family. These two mirroring arcs are that of the hero and the villain, which is what this film does excellently. This film, in every way, is about family, and that is where the heart and soul of this movie comes from, which this movie has a lot to spare. The character of Billy Batson holds this film together, and it wouldn't have worked without the young actor Asher Angel and his grown-up counterpart Zachary Levi, who are both great in the role. Asher is a charismatic kid who plays a despondent middle schooler very well. You see that at his core, he is still a good kid despite many of the actions that he makes at the start of the film. When he gets these abilities, his character handles it like you would think a despondent middle schooler would. He doesn't lose that personality when he becomes Shazam, which is something that I praise Zachary Levi for. He is perfect casting for playing a child in an adult's body, along with the great Tom Hanks. While watching this movie, I had no issues believing that it was the same character. He really stays true to himself, both the good and the more troublesome behaviors. This idea of giving a kid these powers leads to some great comedic moments. This movie is hilarious, especially when Billy and his newfound foster brother Freddy are discovering these abilities. The tone of this movie is exactly what the trailers sell you, and best of all, they don't spoil the funniest moments in the trailers. They do a great job at capturing this tone without giving away anything from the trailers, which left me very pleasantly surprised by almost everything that happens in this movie. I did not know the mythology behind this character, and I became to love it by the end. There is so much that this film dies into, but there is so much more that future installments will hopefully embrace. I will also say that the marketing showed nothing from the villain, which I will also do the same because it really surprised the hell out of me. I now understand why they got the guy who directed Lights Out to direct this film, because he really embraces the darker character moments along with the terrifying moments that the villain presents to our hero. And I loved the finale to this movie, and it really does show that I knew absolutely nothing about the character's source material beforehand. It is far from being perfect, however. The opening scene is amazing, but everything after that is a little bit choppy, particularly the first 25 to 30 minutes of the film. There are also a lot of characters, mainly those in the Foster family, that get very little character besides, oh, that's the one who's going to college, and that's the one who talks too much, and that's the one who plays video games. This film is solely focused on Billy and Freddy that they kind of fall into the background, but in the end I did find it enough to make the payoff with the family satisfying. This film also has one of the greatest final shots in film history, and I'm not exaggerating that in the slightest. This is easily my favorite film in the current DC universe, and if they keep this up, we'll have two great superhero franchises to look forward to every year. And to think that only a few years back, we had three or four comic book movies a year, and now we have three giant comic book movies coming out next month, which is Shazam, Hellboy, and Avengers Endgame. This is a great time to be a comic fan, to love everything in the movie space in general, just as a fandom all together. DC is doing great, Marvel's doing great, Come on, let's just all be excited about these movies because, you know, this one's really good. I can't wait for Endgame. Hellboy looks interesting to say the least, so let's just get pumped for the next month of comic book movies. Make sure you guys check this movie out when it is released next week. So thanks guys for watching this review. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and check me out on Twitter at the ER Movies. I usually tweet out my instant reactions to movies on there, and I also tweeted out my rankings of the current DCEU movies uh, from worst to best, so check it out on there. Thanks guys for watching this review, and I'll see you all in my next one. <laughs>